What does HIMARS look like on Russian radar? There's been a lot of talk about HIMARS and how Russia can't shoot down HIMARS. I actually believe something different. I believe Russia can shoot down HIMARS. They just don't know what they're looking at until it's too late. So I'm going to show you today what HIMARS would look like on a Russian radar screen. Now, HIMARS stands for High Mobility Artillery Rocket System. It's a system that's used by the Army and the Marine Corps for very long range precision strikes. And when you see what the HIMARS rockets actually look like in flight on a Russian radar screen, you'll understand why HIMARS is so critical to Ukraine's survival. Ukraine has used it to great effect on Russian supply lines, and Russia just hasn't found a counter for this yet. This forces Russia to either disperse its logistical and command and control centers, making them less efficient, or divert resources to go and hunt down all these HIMARS launchers. I have been deep in the weeds on air defense these past couple of weeks, mainly because I've been writing a video on how the Patriot missile system actually works, so I'm glad I'm able to show how air defense works in conjunction with HIMARS. Now, air defense is mainly concerned about two different kinds of threats. ABT, which stands for air breathing threat. Those are aircraft, helicopters, cruise missiles, drones. The other kind is TBM, tactical ballistic missiles that travel on a very known profile. There's a third threat called RAM, meaning rocket, artillery, and mortars. America has only been able to counter the RAM threat relatively recently. That means we can shoot down incoming rockets, artillery, and mortars in mid-flight. The American Army uses something called the C-RAM. This is basically a Navy phalanx gun that's been placed on a flatbed trailer. And Israel has a similar system using rockets known as Iron Dome. Now, America has had 20 years to figure out how to counter the RAM threat, mainly because we got so much experience with it because insurgents in Iraq and Afghanistan kept shooting missiles at coalition bases. But Russia has yet to experience this, even though they have some very good air defense systems. The S-400, S-300, Book, Tor, they're very good systems. They're just not optimized for RAM. Let me show you. Okay, now we're inside of a Russian S-400 launch trailer. As you can see, here's the radar screen. The radar can actually go out to 600 kilometers, and the system can hit air breathing threats out to 400 kilometers. It can hit incoming ballistic missiles out to 60 kilometers. Let's start with a simple air breathing threat, and we'll work our way up to high Mars. Okay, let's see what an air breathing threat would actually look like. So there's an air breathing threat. There's track 134. And track 134, if we go and we click on it, it, we see all of its information here. It's flying at 560 kilometers per hour, 60 meters above the ground on a uh, heading uh, 135. So that means that this track is moving low and slow. Most likely, it is an Su-25. Whether it's Russian or Ukrainian, we don't know yet. Both of those countries use the Su-25. Okay, we don't want to shoot down our own plane, so we have to use IFF or Identify Friend or Foe. This is basically a transponder that sits inside your aircraft. And when your radar system interrogates that aircraft, the aircraft should squawk back that it's one of the good guys. So let's actually try to interrogate this aircraft. We're going to select it and hit IFF and we get back no. That means this aircraft is not squawking that it's friendly. Okay, now even though this track isn't squawking back as friendly, I'm still not going to shoot at it yet. I would probably call the battle captain and the battle captain will talk to the Russian Federation Air Force to make sure there's no SU-25s in the area and then we can get clearance to fire. But as you can see, there's time to make that decision because it's such a slow moving target. So now let me show you what a TBM would look like. So let's clear this. Let's increase the resolution to uh, four times. And we see a track right there, track 135. The computer already knows what it is and it sets up a point of impact because nothing on the battlefield looks like a theater ballistic missile except a theater ballistic missile. Now, if I select this track, you can see it's moving at 1,800 kilometers an hour uh, at a height of 70,000 meters. So it's pretty high up in the sky and moving pretty fast. It can only be one thing. That's 500 kilos of Ukrainian hate falling out of the sky. You set that system to automatic, the computer calculates the intercept point and you start launching missiles. Okay, now you know what an ABT and a TBM threat both look like. Here's the problem with shooting down HIMARS. A HIMARS rocket travels at about 2.5 Mach or uh, 3,000 kilometers per hour. This makes it faster than a normal plane, yet it's not following the same flight path as a ballistic missile. So unless the software is programmed to identify what this thing is, 
it's going to show the track, but it's not going to tell you what it is. And to make matters even worse, unguided cheap grad rockets, which are used by both Ukraine and Russia, have a similar flight profile. Yes, they're shorter range, and yes, they go a little bit slower, about 2.1 Mach, but you might not be able to tell the difference between these two weapons until it's too late. So here's what a HIMARS threat is going to look like. And you got six of them coming in. There's six in a launcher. And they look like air breathing threats, but they're not really following a cruise missile profile. They're not following a TBM profile. What the heck are these things? And it's up to you as the operator to figure it out. Now, if Ukraine launches grad rockets with the high Mars rockets, it's going to look something like this. And you're going to have to figure out which one of these things is going 0.4 Mach faster than the other missiles to figure out which is the actual threat. Now, software could tell the difference between a high Mars rocket and a Grad rocket. That would be trivial. That's what computers are really good at. And while I can't confirm this with the data and the manuals that I have, Russian air defense systems should have filters that will allow you to select a range of speed and highlight items traveling in that range of speed. But if they can do that, then why are the HIMARS rockets still getting through? So the Russian air defense systems might need a software update to counter this new RAM or HIMARS threat. But have you ever tried to get software done fast? Just the process for changing the label on a button or the text on a website can be a nightmare two week long process. Can you imagine what it's like to change the software for a missile system? And then there's DevOps. You actually have to deploy this software. And this is where the real nightmare is going to come in because it's going to be an entire process. You're not going to be able to plug the S-400 into the public internet and suck down a patch. Now, Russia might have an internal secure network that they can put the patch on and all the radar stations will pull that patch down and load it. But when that happens, each radar station is going to have to go down temporarily. So they're going to have to coordinate which radar stations go down to receive the software patch. This is going to be a whole project. It's probably going to take at least six months to one year just to fix this one little part in the system. And this also creates a dilemma among Russian air defense forces. When they see a rocket fire between 2.1 and 2.5 Mach, is it a cheap grad rocket or is it an expensive HIMARS rocket? Should they risk shooting an expensive air-to-air -air missile at the thing to shoot it down? Or should they save their missiles for when they definitely know it's a HIMARS? This is a heck of a problem to have. So Ukraine may be at a very distinct advantage in long-range fires until Russia can close this loop. Now, one more thing. Russia could counter HIMARS by protecting their rear areas with medium and short-range air defense systems, the book systems, the tourist systems. But when you do that, you're pulling stuff off the front lines to go to the rear lines, and you're also confirming the fact that there's something of value by this air defense system. So that could make Ukraine want to attack it more. Either way, this is a very unique opportunity for Ukraine and hopefully they can exploit it. Thank you for watching.